Welcome to the Lifestyle Chase. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. Proudly hosted by me, Chris Little. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Lifestyle Chase, episode 24 with Ula Canu. Did I say it right? Can you? Yeah. Ah, close, close. <laughs> Almost. How are you doing today? Good. Busy day, but it's been a really good day so far, despite the cold. Yeah. So what did you do so far? Um, I started this morning with a workout with the guys. I call them the boys. Um, at Panther Gym with Ben. I haven't gone in quite some time. Just my schedule didn't allow it. So today was the first Thursday back with them. So worked it at 6 a.m. We went and grabbed a coffee at Credo and then grabbed a sandwich at Lockstock. So it was like the perfect start to a Thursday. And then I've been in the office until here, kind of building out um, the the content plan for yeah my newest clients. Sweet. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. So take us through your busiest day you've had in the last month. Mm, my busiest day. That's hard. I mean, they, they, uh, they kind of blend into each other. So <laughs> I'd say... They're usually more busy if I if I'm trying to pack in uh, a workout or two, and um, on top of that, do like a client visit or something like that. So, I'd say they're usually the busiest. Also, when you're trying to or when I'm trying to balance in a little bit of my personal life with that of work. So last week was a um, bit of a clusterfuck, and I had to. <laughs> reorganized this week so i'd say last week there were a couple of those oh my god what's going on days and not not at any point was i not happy it just was really packed um to the point where i adjusted my workout plans i got really strict this week on um when i get up when i work out i had to say no to a couple of things and yeah it's a little bit (laughs) less crazy this week but typically if i can get to the studio or work out by 6 a.m and then it just goes. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a hard question to, to answer. I never think of it that way. I find everybody has a different answer and I like to ask that because people don't quite get it just how diverse like yeah. the community is. Um, I have had people make comments that they think my life is busy, but at no point do I feel like it's overwhelming. I like to stay busy. Like I don't have a TV and I don't have Netflix. And when I'm home, it's... Yeah, I'm like tidying up. I'm listening to a podcast. I'm moving around. I really like sit for long periods of time at home unless I'm reading a book or ready to go to bed. Yeah, like that's a, that's a yeah. good way to be. Yeah. Um. So a lot of people that listen to this might know you from Lululemon. Yeah. But you recently left Lululemon. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks ago. So what was life like before Lululemon? Before Lululemon. Yeah. Um. My background is design. So I'll start there. I worked from home. I, yeah, I I loved slash um, really sucked at being a solopreneur. I didn't have boundaries. I didn't um, learn how to run a business properly or some basic like um, client follow-ups, things like that. You know, when you come out of university and you're like, oh, I'm just going to wing it. It was one of those situations. So before Lululemon, I was self-employed working from home as a designer um, and to help me build some of my business acumen, I actually took a, um, a job at a, a trust company as a currency trader for a couple of years. Once I did that, I got some amazing lessons from it. And when I was ready to take a change, that's when someone suggested Lululemon for me. And it was just the perfect timing. I was, I was moving more seriously into, um, practicing yoga. I was a lot more open to development at that point as well. I finally was becoming aware I didn't know a lot and I think it was just like the right timing to start with Lululemon yeah and what were the the lessons that you kind of learned in in that venture before Lululemon Mm, yeah um I think back to my designer days and the lessons I learned a big one is around boundaries even if you're working from home creating office hours knowing when not to respond and and I'm not saying like don't respond to your clients and I still catch myself responding at like crazy times I'll I uh <laughs> caught myself it was like 6 a.m and I replied to a text and I was like who replies to a work text at 6 a.m <laughs> this is like this is exactly how you you know boundaries get blurry and no one's gonna get mad at you if you reply at 8 a.m yeah you know yeah. um so just keeping that my eye on that 
uh, creating a designated workspace in your home, even if it's just a desk, but like treating it like your workspace. So your, your living room table isn't also your office. I think there's those designations that need to happen. So when you're ready to relax, you can relax. And my bedroom is my bedroom. I rarely do anything other than sleep in there or, you know, like sometimes I'll read, but that's about it because I don't want my living space to be my workspace and vice versa. Um, and like I look back and if anything, it's like the lessons I learned were from mistakes, you know, um, don't put all your eggs in one client's basket. <laughs> You know, like I had a, a great client that sent me a lot of work and I just became too reliant and complacent. So now I'm always, always looking for the, you know, the next client, the next venture, the next opportunity. Not that I don't love who I'm working with, but I'm also aware that they are allowed to make decisions that benefit their business. And that could be, you know, the, the lady I worked with decided to move to Calgary. Like, there you go. It's not that I wasn't doing my job. It's that she made a life choice. And... Yeah, you just have to always be a little bit of that hustle if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah that you makes can't, sense. can't sit back. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so tell us about this past year. It might be creeping on two years now, but mm-hmm. like your your badassery moment, this mm-hmm. like reinvention that you've done. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. Like it, it never started that way. It never was like I I one day decided, oh, I'm gonna like start running and boxing and lose weight and become self-employed again (laughs) and all these kind of things um I think I just was at a a, I felt like I was at a standstill or a low point and I maybe subconsciously started looking for things and I started aligning my habits with other people that I was either inspired by or admired and um yeah I just started hanging out with different people and not that like I stopped completely with others but I just dedicated more time with with other people and naturally I started doing the things that they're doing and it 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 really changed my life and I tried you know um yeah I just tried new things I got out of my comfort zone a ton so you know starting to run uh and it's funny even to this day I'll say like I'm learning to run and then I have to catch myself like no I am a runner um it's like a part of my identity and I think that's like important to say it that way now and yeah, I, I, the transformation, I guess kind of, but that's, that's how it is. It kind of creeps on you, yep. you know, and, and as it creeps up and other people start noticing it, um, and they start reflecting it back, uh, you know, people started commenting like, Oh, have you registered for a race? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You know, like, so you, you start getting this like feedback loop and it just kind of starts snowballing. Um, yeah. And I'm really lucky. I have people in my life that gave me advice even when I didn't ask for it, but they gave it in such a positive, like supportive way that I never felt that, you know, it it wasn't like they're trying to correct behavior. They were just so excited about what I was doing. Um, You know, I had a student send me a a run program for the summer. Like, wow, how nice is that? Um, You know, I had my friend Michael, even little things like saying, hey, you should probably track your calories and like see how much protein you're, <laughs> you know, you're eating. I, you're probably at a deficit and, and just kind of learning those things. So I feel like the the community and the people around me really kind of supported me. And um, yeah, and, and then it just, I don't know, I just like one, one day I was like, looked in the mirror and I was like, whoa, like I'm not only um, mentally stronger, but I'm physically stronger. My, my connections and community it's stronger. Like my relationships are better. Uh, I look at the, I call my board of directors. It's like this group of women and, um, yeah, we check in on each other. Like we send texts, we send memes, we ask questions, we refer clients, you know, and, and I'm thinking, man, yeah, like a year and a half ago, I, I couldn't have said I had that. Yeah. I had friends, but I didn't have people that were friends and also like really rooting for me. Like yeah. here is a client. You're, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's, that's amazing. Um, so really believing in me. Yeah. That's so cool. And it's, it's relatable because like my own journey, I completely changed careers. Mm-hmm. This podcast has kind of like n- nurtured some of the relationships that I have. Cause I actually get like that every week at least once, maybe sometimes twice, I have like a genuine conversation with the person. Mm-hmm. And it's not like rehearsed or scripted. It's like real and authentic. Mm-hmm. That's become so valuable to me mm-hmm. because there are so many people that can like make me a better person. And if I put it on a podcast, I can make a lot of people a better person. Yeah. It's just so cool. Yeah, I feel... Um, I feel like I, I've been a lot more vulnerable in the past year. Just being really 
a lot more honest with people around me and and telling them like no actually I, I'm having a really shitty day or like I'm really struggling with this run or I don't want to do that right now or I'm really exhausted and I think those moments have led to the best conversations I'm like why are we why am I pretending <laughs> you know why am I pretending that this I'm not tired or um whatever it is uh people reflect that back when you're vulnerable they'll, they'll reflect it back and if you're vulnerable with the right people yeah no that makes sense you have to choose your people well mm -hmm. so you talk about your uh board of directors mm -hmm. who who is your board of directors i'm curious uh yeah so i have my friend kara she actually used to be well she still is my chiropractor that's yep. actually how we met uh andrea rice is on there um ali is on there <laughs> Danielle Murray. There's a photo of us uh, on our on all of our Instagrams. We did our girls' Christmas brunch, and Des is on there. She's my roommate as well. So these are the the women in my life that know everything. Yeah. Like I could blurt anything, and they'd be like, "Cool." Like there's no <laughs> there's no wrong thing you could say to them, and I really respect them for um, what they have created, the work that they've done themselves, whether it's personal or um, you know professional, and um yeah I, I feel like having that core group of people is so important and I remember years ago someone had told me that like I didn't make up the term board of directors for for life but someone told me that I needed one yeah and I I didn't purposely start it if that makes sense it just kind of happened and now I feel like there's others that I have added to the list and uh, I would say like Jared Smith is one as well like he's a guy that you know I was boxing with this morning and you know we sat down at Credo for a coffee and, and I was like man like I'm at the point where I'm like oh my god what if I have to hire someone this year how do I do that what, what's your advice on this you know and he has years of experience and um yeah and we can make jokes about it at the same time so I'll always listen to someone that's like way further ahead of me. Um, yeah, so I'd say he's another one on the on the board. That's awesome. Yeah. So try and summarize the advice you've gotten from these people in your life into mm. three of the top Ooh. top advice. Top advice. <sighs> I'd say just for most most recent um, and kind of what has been impacting my kind of uh, work decisions. Um, Jared had said that you're going to do just as much work for the clients that pay you less than the ones that pay you more. And he's so right. Like I, building out a, you know, service-based um, business where you're trying to accommodate everybody, it, it can be really difficult, right? I'm, I'm not the type of person to be like, oh, oh, you're on this tier. I'm not going to do that for you. I'm the type of person that's like, no, it just actually needs to get done. So it's it's been the back of my mind of like structuring a business, knowing that if you're the type of person that's always going to do the most, then why are you trying to tier clients? Like just do the best that you can for all of them and then structure your, your pay in that, in that regard as well. Um, yeah, so I, I'd say that as well has been quite quite eye-opening and, and he even said it this morning because I was talking about like okay so as I've taken on t um I haven't taken on clients yet but I've opened up time to be able to take on clients like what does it look like to structure and all these kind of things and um yeah so it, it's interesting having that that perspective because I agree I was like there's no way I'm gonna do less so what does it look like if you're always going to do a lot it could be that you're also stretching yourself if you're pretending that you're going to do less, yeah, yeah. yeah like, oh, I'm, you're going to be at a lower tiered rate, but I'm going to do less. No, 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 no. You're going to do just as much. Um, I'd say that. Um, I'd say in the last year, uh, Michael Dietrich has been kind of my go-to like guy friend for relationships. Um, he's just gives me like the dude's opinion on things. And uh, he just was like, you shouldn't date. <laughs> Solid advice for Mountain Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, but yeah, I look back at it now and I'm like, yeah, like you're totally right. <laughs> like I was like, what was I thinking? This was bad. So he's definitely the guy I I like go to for guys, guys advice. Yeah. And um, 
yeah i'm so grateful and he's gone through his own things as well so he has his own his perspective on it but i'm so grateful that um you know the couple times that i've gone to the mountains with him or you know we'll go to the gym or whatever it is he <laughs> he almost just says it's so blunt yeah um yeah and and i think it's hard when you know i went from like an eight relationship to being single and then having someone be like no you shouldn't date but like my 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 norm was being in a relationship so it's easy i think for people just to fall back into a relationship so having like a clear head actually giving yourself time to grow as a person um get back to what's important to you if you've stepped away from it all of that i think giving yourself time is so important now and i'm like eternally grateful that he was a one person who was like don't don't bother versus yeah. a lot of people were like ah you know just like get out there and get dating and i'm like yeah well that that probably wasn't the best so that and he's like a he's a no bullshit guy yeah and i have to say like i, I uh, slid into his dms i'm trying to get him on the podcast mm -hmm. so when you run into him just mm -hmm. kind of give him a nudge tell him Man, to answer Chris Little. that guy the guy sucks at texting and i can tell him i can say that because he knows it um he's busy you know he his building his own business he's out in the mountains pursuing his passion um he's evolving as a human and his business is evolving as well so um the way i view our relationship is when we have time we have time totally. and in, in between it's like totally cool like there'll be sometimes like i don't hear from him for two months and yeah. i'm like oh my god so good to hear from you <laughs> right so i'd say that's like a really good one um and i think in general the final one is having as much faith in myself as my friends do yeah, I think that's like an overarching theme. I, I think of um, like like Farah is a good one, Farah Nahid. They're like huge cheerleaders for me. And I feel, I jokingly told Farah, I was like, oh, if I meet a guy, you'll know it's serious if he meets you. Because like if they don't pass there, <laughs> you know what I mean, thing, then they probably won't go far. But uh, I just respect their opinion so much with business and personal life. Yeah. Like I look at them and I'm like, you guys are an amazing couple like and every couple will have its ups and downs but i'm so inspired by how much they support one another while also giving space to do their own thing you know like farah does her own thing and he does his own thing but they also um support one another like you know Nahid going to her classes or whatever it is um yeah i really admire what they what they do and they have so much faith in me and i look at my friends that I, I look back on it and I felt in the moment it was like, I was like, wow, I feel like they're taking like a chance on me. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's extremely relatable for me. Cause yeah. like I, I've grown very close with both of them and I kind of have that same thing. I'm like, if, if a girl comes with me to a spin class, <laughs> then you know, it's serious. It's yeah. like, oh shit. Like Chris brought somebody. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they're, they're so smart. Um, but they're not just intelligent, intelligent, um, when it comes to, you know, business and whatever, but like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but it's emotionally intelligent and like, they really follow their heart and they're, they're so kind. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really like trust their opinion. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, that'd be the last lesson is just, um, and I'm not there a hundred percent. Like I'm not maybe as, as confident or believe it as often as my friends do, but I just think back to how many times my friends had faith in me. Yeah. I'm like, wow, people care. It's an important reminder. And if like, if your friends don't have that faith in you, you've mm -hmm. got to get new friends. <laughs> yeah, That's like I, just how it goes. Yeah. I am. Um, and, and also I think what I'm trying now to do is, is reciprocate as yeah. much as possible, not just to them, but kind of pass it on as well. Like there's a couple of people in my life where, um, that, you know, some are younger than I am and, and I'm thinking, I wish someone had said this to me when I was their age, or I wish someone had uh, just invited me to something like this when I was their age, because it could be the stepping stone to like their next venture or their next uh, opportunity. And really that's like, what else could you do? It's so simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So in the last year, you've become a dog mom. Yeah. Tell us about that. What were the five best things and the five toughest things? Oh, um, I've always wanted a dog. So leading into it, um, I actually spent quite a time waiting for a rescue. I, I really wanted a whip it, which I do now I have. So it was a lot of patience. And then finally, what it took for me to get Indy was my roommate Des saying, um, saying I should get it, get him because I obviously live with her. Right. So she's like, if you get Indy, he didn't have that name at the time, but if you get a dog, I'll help you. And I was like, okay, great. 
I'm going to do it. Um, let's see. I'll start with the hardest so we can end on a positive note. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hardest. I feel if you want a lesson in, um, what is it called? What the, the word I'm looking for is personal responsibility. Get a dog. They reflect back everything. It's like having a child in the sense of um, if I if I'm stressed and high strung, Indy gets stressed and high strung. If I'm um, messy, <laughs> Indy will destroy my things, and that's a reflection of my you know my home or my mental state. Um, if I'm stressed and you know he's not getting enough exercise, well, direct response is that he's going to be hyper in the house or you know all that kind of stuff. So I'd say. If you want to uh, want to learn personal responsibility, get a dog, <laughs> get a puppy. Um, so that's that's been interesting. Uh, and then also juggling and balancing my life, knowing that they require so much work. So I was driving home on my lunch breaks at half an hour, and I like timed it. You know, I had ten minutes to get there, ten minutes with Indy, ten minutes to drive back, and asking for favors, asking for help <laughs> to dog sit him, and all these kind of things. And understanding that once you have a pet in your home, it's your life has to adjust but that's also why I got a dog because I felt like I, I needed an anchor something yeah. to like bring me home and and like really structure my life so I'd say like that's both sides of the coin as good and bad um if you have a pet you have to structure your life it's like having a child like you have to be up at a certain time you have to walk them at a certain time you have to do things at a certain time you have to plan your life you have to be really organized um and they're freaking expensive and it's not like the <laughs> it's not the the cost of buying the dog um it's the everything else yeah he chewed my passport my glasses um two pairs of glasses i just i had to completely replace one a couple weeks ago yeah all those little things you don't think of but i mean that's kind of what you sign up for and and i, I was really surprised what's hard is you get so attached like i'm going to the mountains this weekend and i'm already feeling guilty <laughs> because he throws temper tantrums he's so sensitive like i i went to hawaii came back and it was like a week of temper ta temper tantrums you know of him being upset like what did you do why would you leave me yeah. um yeah so and and you know just like really seeing your reactions and your your emotions and controlling them and understanding that a dog like indy doesn't understand negative like try to communicate only in positive Right. So just getting really creative, try not to get mad. And there's days where like I texted Des the other day. I was like, I'm going to lose it because, <laughs> you know, he's woo wooing at me. He wants attention. I'm trying to work at home and I can't work and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, just figuring it all out. But the, the positives always oh, so much. He's the cuddliest guy ever. Like he's happy to be held. He just wants to hang out. He just wants to be near people. He's so gentle and kind to humans and every other animal. I could just like keep on going and be that creepy dog mom or that weird dog mom, I should say. But I am so grateful um, that I that I have him. Yeah. When you got him, was it kind of like a leap of faith or did you have all your ducks in a row? You were financially ready. Uh, it was really funny. I It was really hard to get a whippet. And then um, there's not a lot of breeders in the, in the province. So I started considering going down to California to get one. And I emailed a couple breeders and one responded with, hey, I actually had someone back out. Do you want one? And it was like a week later. <laughs> and I was like, sure, no problem. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was like kind of sudden. Like we had, I had nothing ready to go. And I like ran to the pet store and got like a crate and um, didn't even have dog bowls or anything. And um, like she gave me a leash when I got him. And I was like, thank God, I don't even have a leash. Like I'm so unprepared. Yeah. Um, but they, they need like a special leash. They're not like, they need like a sight hound leash. So they're not easy to find. And yeah, so I was like totally unprepared. Yeah. Yeah. My house was just like, okay, buddy, try not to chew things while I go get a baby gate. Totally. <laughs> like that was and the I situation. That's the way like the best things happen. Just mm. all the, the big leaps in our life. We think that we're just going to know that we're ready, mm. but we're never really ready. No, no. I think I honestly look back on this, you know, the, the months that I've had him and, he he really like helped me like there was times where i was like really low and i think back and i'm like well oh. like indy really helped my mood and i i keep saying that like i'd I'd love to train him to be a therapy dog and, and volunteer with him just because i feel like he's helped my life so much he's really elevated um 
yeah, just my general mood. Like you can't, you can't, you can't be upset for too long when you have him in your lap and he's, yeah, yeah. he's there. I believe that like people don't deserve dogs. Like, that's how great dogs mm. are. And I'm such a fan of other people's dogs. Mm. Truly, I want to get a dog, but with my like my life, the weekends, how I'm out late working at Central, and then the weekdays, like sometimes it might be like an early start mm-hmm. or just there's no balance yet. So once I find balance, even if maybe I'm not financially ready, I'll probably get a dog. Mm-hmm. But it'll have to be a smaller dog because I don't have the space for. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny. I don't think I was. Um, I don't. I'm not saying like go get a dog like yeah, yeah you're being responsible but yeah. at the same time um that's like what I was thinking the whole time I was like well I can't like I'm out of the house a lot and, th- and the funny thing is you just figure it out like you just make it work you figure it out and I actually had put up all my goals uh I had like a printed goal sheet that my dog comes to work with me not even six months later my dog comes to work with me like Perfect. I figured it out right yeah. so he was you know the reason I was late today is I was like oh I should actually take him home like I don't want to leave him alone in the office so I took him home and um i'm so grateful to the guys that move that they they're like they sweeten the pot by telling me i could bring the my dog to work i was like oh way to my heart <laughs> well know? i mean i think they had the intuition to know that that was like an important part yeah. of the deal yeah lifestyle you yeah, know totally so tell me you know, the five best things that you learned from your time with lululemon mm. okay um feedback giving and taking feedback i'd say um before i would take feedback in the sense i was used to getting it for uh design work so i was already like i was i wasn't shut off from it and i was used to getting feedback for as a trader on sales like they'd listen onto your phone your phone calls and give you like very very direct feedback um but lululemon just does it in like a really authentic way um just person to person you know and it's not always feedback in relation to your work but feedback for life how you're coming across, um, how you're talking to someone, how you could be talking to someone, practice, take twos, you know, things like that. Um, like if, if you mess up a conversation, coming back to it again and not being afraid, hey, can I can I have a take two on that? Which I think before uh, I would have been afraid to say, admitting that I could have been wrong or maybe I didn't say it properly. So feedback is huge. Um my favorite lines is ask for uh, forgiveness. And that was something that Lululemon kind of drilled into me in the beginning, taking kind of leaps of faith in, in situations where you just need to make a decision. And, and that's an interesting idea to have if you're an employee to be like my, my superior air quotes is going to have my back. And if I make a mistake, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so definitely just ask for forgiveness. It'll, it usually is the right decision. Like I'm thinking back and I'm like, I don't think I ever did something where someone's like, you should not have done that. Um, your gut and your experience intuition are usually correct. So just going with it. I think, um, those are two top lessons. What else? I think, uh, I, I look at the transformation from when I first started to when I left, when I first started, I was hired on as what they call a seasonal uh, business lead. So SBL. And that was just like, you know, helping during the busy season with budgets, with hours, hiring, onboarding, offboarding, um, those types of things, very like operational. And that's where I really thought my strength was. And I can still be that way. I just realized that I don't love it. And Lululemon and the, the people at Lululemon, when they, they took a chance on me they sent me up to fort mcmurray after six months working with them to be a store manager and when i came back they said what we actually think you'd be best at is community work and i remember having that conversation being like uh you're completely crazy like i don't think i'm a community manager i like i'm you know like i like operations all these i'm a like i'm used to sitting in front of computer and all that kind of stuff and um they just reflected back to me what I had done while I was in Fort McMurray. And that's what it took for me to be like, oh, oh, okay. Like actually you might be right. And now I look at the transformation and community is like a cornerstone of my life now. Like my, all my friends are through Lululemon, all like my workouts. So everything I love doing is basically through the work I did with Lululemon. Yeah. Um, so recognizing that, you know, I actually love connecting with people. I'm, I love networking with people. And that was really them having to tell me that I was good at it because I didn't, I didn't recognize that in myself. I, I was always like, and I'm, I'm an introvert, you know, and, and, 
And that said, when someone tells me they're introvert and that's why they don't talk to people, I say it's because you're lazy. You can learn to talk to people. Introvert just means you get your energy, you know, differently. And I am still an introvert. I like my alone time. I like one-on-one -on -one time with people. I, I generally, um, you know, when I think of a fun time, I don't think of hanging out with 100 people. I think yeah. of hanging out with one person or two people, like really close-knit. Um, but that's that's separate from, you know, what you, what you need to work on for work or whatever it is. But how many was that? Three? You got three. You got two. Okay, what else? What else did I learn from Lululemon? Um, honestly, a lot of business acumen. I would say that as well. Um, I suck at emails. I really, I mean, to this day, I, <laughs> and it's not something I'm like, I'm not using an ex excuse. It's something that I actually just have to be very proactive at. And um, yeah, communication, learning communication via email. And it seems so, you know, like, okay, that's pretty basic, Ula. But communication, if you're not face to face with someone and those tools and skills of having a phone call and getting a point across, I, I laugh now when I get emails from people and they're like an, an essay. I'm like, well, that's probably should have been a phone call, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's such an important skill to have and Lululemon is really good at drilling that into people, um, whether that's verbal, whether that's a message, whether that's, you know, an email. Um, it's so important, communication, yeah. Like That's they, true. they like elevated my, my game in that like a hundred times. So yeah. And that leaves one. Hey. Yeah. You bet. Hmm. Relationship building. Yeah. I'd say that again, I think, uh, they gave me the space to, um, flounder a couple times, mess up a couple times and, um, really learn how to build rapport quickly with people and in a way that's that's authentic to me so i never really felt like i had to like be fake you know what i mean like i think there's probably companies out there that your job is to be like a connector and but then you go home and and that's it like you don't i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't consider them friends or whatever yeah, but yeah. with lululemon i'm like no 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 like all of our ambassadors like have my cell phone and they text me and um they're i would consider them friends and people that i go to and now like you know, Jared Smith was an ambassador and those things. And then now they're like so integral in my life. So relationship building is so, so key. And all my opportunities came through those. Totally. And just like that importance of being yourself. Yeah. Cause that's something like, I can't say it enough because in the fitness industry, there's two streams. There's the people that'll be themselves. And then there's people that'll try and like project what they think everybody wants to see or what they see is successful. Mm -hmm. And in the long game, just like, it's a dangerous game. Yeah. Doing doing what you think is right with your values mm -hmm. is the right thing to do. Because people yeah. will stand by you, they'll have your back, mm -hmm. and it'll work out. Whether you're making a whole bunch of money right off the bat or not, like you want to have your life be sustainable. You don't want to double cross anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just not, not good. Yeah, and I think like portraying one one lifestyle or one way of being publicly versus, you know, in private, it, it'll backfire. Yeah. Agreed. And people see through that. Yeah. Yeah. People's bullshit filter is pretty good. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So tell me about City Yoga X. Yeah. Um, it's coming back. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm like, I finally am like making a plan for this year for what it's going to look like. Um, so City Yoga. So my my teaching journey, I've, I've worked at and taught at amazing studios in the city. And... I think just like my lifestyle dictated a little bit more flexibility. I I had permanent classes in a couple studios and loved it. And I probably will go back to subbing. I think it's a great community to be part of. And I also, I guess I'm just like a serial entrepreneur. Like I wanted to do my own thing. And, and I was talking to actually Simon Bennett this morning where it's really funny. I was reading that most entrepreneurs nowadays don't start one business. They start two at the same time. And like, that's kind of how I feel. Like I'm starting, um, you know, my work with social media and community on one side, but then mirroring it is city yoga because the lessons that you learn from one can apply straight to the other. And it could be as basic as like, hey, I'm looking for an accountant. Well, why wouldn't I get an accountant for both? Like, you know, hey, I'm building a website. Well, why wouldn't I build a website for both? So um, with City Yoga, it, it started as by donation yoga. So bringing yoga to the people. I want to teach and I don't always think it's really accessible in the city. 
I think fitness in our city can be quite expensive. And it's, I'm not saying like studios are wrong to charge and I'm not saying anyone is wrong to make money. Like you deserve to make an income based on what you're doing. I 100% agree. It just gets a little tricky sometimes. And I want people to have access to yoga. So let's say you're a runner and you're committed to having your gym membership or, you know, you love spin and you're committed to doing spin and you're paying a hundred plus dollars a month. Okay. So then if you're only doing a drop in rate somewhere for yoga and it's like the average rates, $20 a drop in, I mean, that gets really expensive. And when I was with Lululemon, we have part of our benefits covered workouts. And I'd look at how much I'd spend on workouts every month. I'd like max out our workout benefits plus some. And on average, I could spend like $300 a month on workouts. And I was like, this is insane. This isn't like the average person can't can't do this. It's not sustainable. Um, so where can how can I create a system that would be beneficial for both parties? So that's where I, I got the donation idea. And I have to th- thank uh, Danielle Murray actually for that one. She pointed me in a direction. There's a, um, there's a studio in Hawaii that does that. And it all kind of came about because the studio I was currently working at shut down. And I was like, well, I don't want to stop teaching. I want people to have yoga. I, you know, all these kind of like thoughts came up and um, being who I am, I was just like, I'm just going to go teach yoga. And if you guys don't want to pay me, that's cool. So I worked with local businesses to bring people into their space, which is a nice exposure for them. Um, yeah, be in their space for, you know, 90 minutes. The class is an hour long and people donate what they can. And sometimes that's nothing. And sometimes that's like a $20 bill or a $50 bill. Like I've had friends be like, oh my God, I forgot to bring money today. And I'm like, totally fine. I'm not even looking at the jar. At the jar. I'm not giving suggestions and or anything like that. You do what you can. And um it's always worked out. It's always been, you know, like a great experience for the teacher and, and the students. It's been wonderful. And we, I say we, because there was a roster of teachers I didn't do it by myself. Um, yeah, we volunteered a lot of time too. We did completely free yoga in the summer and I, I want to do it again this summer. We just picked a spot on the legislature grounds and posted a schedule and just come, just come to yoga. Like yeah. don't pay anything. Like we're totally fine teaching for free. Um, and that was also a great experience for some of the newer teachers, which is hard. Like when you're, when you're a new teacher in the city, um, we're, we're flooded with great teachers. So having to like break into an industry and not having the chance to practice teach, to have students just like totally understand you're new and be like, Hey, thanks for class. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and that's that's the fitness industry as a whole new group fitness, Mm -hmm. new trainers, new yoga, new everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like unless you get so competitive to get your feet wet. Yeah. Yeah. So what was your two biggest takeaways from, from doing city yoga? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's obviously uh, a community for it. There's a need for it. And that's why I'm confident it'll come back. It is coming back and, and it'll, it'll evolve. It just has to at this point, um, for, you know, operational reasons even. And, um yeah so it'll evolve but i think the people it was really it was really interesting the diversity of people that showed up because i started offering yoga and i don't know what i expected but i was really used to the crowd that comes to the studios and then uh the crowd that came to city yoga was just crazy diverse like i had hardcore runners and the only yoga they ever did was with me you know and what they were looking for is just a non-studio setting or maybe like a less traditional um yeah. setting yeah which like super welcoming and um and every once in a while we do like something fun or random and um just see if it worked and people really responded well so i was really um impressed with the support from the community and like so grateful the runners were huge the runners helped so much yeah, <laughs> like, I, I think bet. yeah they're like a mob yeah like, you get one of them on board yeah and they're amazing the rest, yeah it's awesome yeah they're amazing to work with and and yeah i just felt so supported by them yeah so i think the community and the need for it something that's accessible um and what else i think also the crossover to like I was so impressed with the businesses I worked with like I think of like Urban Timber and um they didn't know me like they really didn't know me at all and then they just like opened up their space I like reached out to the owner and he was like yeah I have kettlebell classes here why not have yoga it's like okay that was easy um I think to like the moth 
and you know they hosted a class there like none of them had to do that yeah like they didn't really didn't have to do anything they did not have to open their doors they did not have to pay for a person to stand there and like some of them literally gave me the key to their door i was like you guys are so trusting you know um so i was really blown away by the the trust in the in the city businesses just being i think that's a great idea that you're trying to give yoga to more people here you go that's awesome boom (laughs) what was it like the day that you launched on social media um if if i felt so vulnerable yeah it was scary (laughs) (laughs) it was so scary because um you know i was like the i still am like if you look at city yoga i'm like on it a lot yeah and um to be like hey i have this vision (laughs) you know would do you guys want to support it um it was really scary because like i didn't know what i was doing i still don't know what i'm doing half the time and so kickstarting it i wasn't sure if anyone would ever show up and i and i still sometimes think that but now i'm confident that you know people will show up because they love it and they ask for it so it's scary yeah one thing that it'll be like a testament to how much of uh far as support that you have is that at the time i was an instructor at true ride and so she had just trained us yeah and in the group chat she's like all right you guys uh here's this city yoga x you're all going to like it and share it and we were like yep, uh, we're on it yeah so yeah it's cool like having people yeah. that have people that support them support the people that they support totally and so edmonton yeah you know it's so edmonton i i um i'm sure other cities are like that but i think uh yeah, like when you said, what are the two things you learned from it? I'm like, well, the students support me and the businesses support me. Yeah. So it's like literally everyone just chips in, you know, one, that one share that you, you, you think it's all, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but it could really like get you out to a new market or, you know, the next location or your next best teacher or whoever, right? Or it could impact someone in the sense of like them not knowing that it exists and suddenly now they have access to yoga, whereas before they hadn't. Um, so yeah, the support in the city is just... It's unreal. And it's so reassuring for people that ever have doubts, like, will this work out? Like, yeah. if you just kind of trust the process yeah. and be prepared for, like, things to go wrong, but just work through it, then yeah. it'll work out. Yeah. And I was, uh, I tried to be as transparent as I could with people, kind of, like, saying, like, hey, I have no clue. Like, I don't know. Like, no one else is doing this in the city. Let's just, like, see if it works. And, you know, I tried a couple different things that didn't work and kind of worked. And, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So let's talk family. What mm-hmm. role does your family play in your life? Mm. I So I'm not from here originally. I was born in Poland. I grew up in Edmonton. So I, I am like, I don't think of myself as not being a Canadian, but I definitely have um, a very strong connection to Poland still. I still think of it as like home, yep. if that makes sense. And uh <laughs> I joke it's like my my parents came here and then they left (laughs) they left me (laughs) and uh um so my my dad lives in brazil uh my mom's a snowbird and she lives in mexico if she can do more than half a year she'll do more than half a year and very very nice uh kind of thing that happened this year is my brother moved back and uh i don't know if he'll stay but him and his girlfriend are giving edmonton a year and he's lucky that he can work remote and she's she can as well so they're giving edmonton another try so the role they play now i i think is quite different from what they had played a couple years ago i think like the transformation that i have gone through and it's weird to actually say transformation but yeah i guess that's accurate um i think i was less willing to share the real details of my life you know how you were with your parents sometimes you're like oh, i don't want to tell them that like i'm stressed yeah, yeah you know or that my relationship isn't going at the way i'd wanted to go and i at, like at some point like over a year ago just was like no that's bullshit like if anyone should know what's going on in my life it's my parents yeah. and with them i have like the most real conversations they know everything like when i was going through my breakup like you know my parents are divorced they they went through the hardship of it as well like i listened to what my dad had to say i listened to what my mom had to say i called my brother and i asked him what he thought you know and um i really listened to what they had to say whereas i think before i would have hidden a lot more thinking that it um saved them the grief or like the the worry of it and not anymore 
yeah, I just like tell them, the, tell them how it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, they worry and they, you know, whatever, but at the same time, they, they're, they're amazing. And, and I think part of that is, is because they're not here. You, I have to be that way. You know, like when they call me, I have them on the phone for an hour. It's not like I spend Sunday afternoon or Sunday brunch with them every single week for four hours where you have a natural cadence and time to let, you know, conversations evolve. It's like, no, I got, I got you for an hour and next week I'm in the mountains. So I'm probably not going to talk to you. So sometimes I don't talk to you for two or three weeks and that's okay. So when I talk to you, I'm going to tell you how it is and what I'm excited about, what I'm you know scared of, the advice you got to give me. And Yeah. Yeah, they know everything. It's awesome. It's important. Like I found when I made my big leap and changed careers, I had about like two weeks where I was essentially unemployed. Yeah. And it was scary. Yeah. And so I called my parents like every day, sometimes twice a day. Yeah. Because it's like you just kind of got to get your thoughts off your head, just kind of like see yeah. it. Yeah. And more often than not, parents have gone through everything. That everything and anything. Yeah. Like, like yeah, they've done it. <laughs> they've done it. Like my, my parents literally have done everything I have done. They've owned businesses. They've gotten a divorce. You know, they've, they've done it. So why not listen? And, um, yeah. And it's interesting cause they, they're, it's when they call, it's, it's interesting what they'll say sometimes like they're being, I don't want to say it's not like they weren't thoughtful before, but now they're even more aware of like, what I need in that yeah. relationship. It's, it's, I love it. Yeah. Well, it's because you've communicated with them more clearly and yeah. more like authentically that yeah. they understand their role. Yeah. Oh my God. My parents are like hilarious now. Like talking about dating, <laughs> like talking about dating with my parents is hilarious. You know, like the advice they say and the things they'll tell me and I'll laugh. Like I'll often laugh and be like, Oh my God, dad, like, no. But then I think about it later and I was like, actually, that's like really good advice. You know, like that's coming from a guy that, you know, has gone through two divorces and he's like, okay, this is what I wish I had done, you know, or like, this is what you can expect or <laughs> whatever. What's so, the three best pieces of advice you got? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my mom, I always go back to, I think I posted a couple posts ago was um, one day you'll wake up and you know it's over, you know, and, and. I think it's human nature to overthink things. I think it's human nature to want to know the answer before you're ready for it. And, and it could have gone either way. Like I could have woken up one morning and be like, no, I'm like really committed to this. And yeah, it was the craziest sensation to be like, no, I'm like ready to move on. And there wasn't, there wasn't like as much thinking and overthinking I could have done about it. It was just, it was time. And she called it. She was like, She's like, don't overthink it. Like, you'll just know. That's crazy. But <laughs> yeah, true. but so true because yeah. it's like when you're ready, you're ready, and when you're not, you're gonna you're gonna probably suffer for a bit. And just be kind to yourself, be easy on yourself and your partner. And if you want to work on it, then work on it. That's also fine. Like yeah. you know, there's no wrong either way. Um, so I'd say that, and I think that's a lesson I, I I'm pulling forward into other areas of my life now. Um, you you won't know. You won't know until you know. Yeah. <laughs> like thinking about it won't let you know. Um, so I think that's like a big, big lesson. And my dad actually, he said, he told me to be ready, which is weird. And I, people are like, what does that mean to be ready? But like, he's like, when you are living with someone and you're kind of codependent on each other um, financially, like, you know, like I, my, my ex, like I was really close to his family, all these kind of things. He was like, you don't want the, the reason you stay to be a financial reason. So he's like, you just need to know that like you be secure and self-sufficient. He's like, look at your life right now. Like you shouldn't be leaning on anyone and not that you shouldn't have a partnership. I think that's separate, but like if you're, if you're embroiled in a relationship where you're, you know, like, should I stay? Should I go? And and the only reason you're staying is because they help you pay rent. Yeah. Like, come on, that's yeah. not a relationship. You know, that's a roommate. Um, so I, I, yeah, I took account of my life. I looked at like my finances. I looked at like my, um, day to day, week to week, you know, habits of, you know, where am I, 
um, feeling like I'm adding to his life or he's adding to mine, taking away at like, where are these, like these crossovers? And, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure when I made the decision, it was from a, like a very clear headed place and not to do with finances, not to do with anything other than like, what is the right decision for my life moving forward, not being held by my past. So that's a really good one. Yeah. And that, again, that's like also, I think something I'm pulling forward into other areas of my life and, and considering like I'm building a business and at the same time now, like how am I building that business? So if I choose to shift or, you know, change gears, how am I set up financially? Where are my savings going? Like just like fucking be an adult, you know? Um, yeah, that one I'd say is a bit of a really big (laughs) one. Um, and both of my parents said it in their own way, but actually listen to what the other person is saying. Cause what they're saying is like their truth. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like what they're telling you is true. It may not, you know, like you can make up whatever story you want, but in their world, their world, it's really true. So it, it, it forces you to be a little bit more empathetic. So when someone, if you're like out in the dating world now and someone's like, I'm not ready for a relationship, like hear it for what it is. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's like they're not ready for a relationship and you're not going to be the one that convinces them that they are. Just stop. It doesn't say you can't go on dates with them, but don't force something that's not there. You're going to cause so much grief and the heart isn't that cut and dry, but um, just really hearing people for what they're saying and asking questions, right? So I, uh, yeah, I, that's something I, I'm pulling forward as well. And and listening, like really, really, when I was going through like the, the lowest parts of my relationship, like really listening to what my partner had been saying and being like, holy shit he's been saying that for eight years and i never listened like i never really truly listened to what he was saying that's crazy like when you take a step back and you just think about it because i i'm sitting across the table from you thinking about my own scenarios in my own life and i'm like yep i have not listened lots yeah and just to like smack yourself in the face and be like look like they made it pretty loud and clear yeah like what if the words they're saying are just what yeah. It's what it is. There is no backstory. And there could be, but there's there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. Like, I think it goes back to what I said earlier. Like, when you know, you know. <laughs> just, so when they're telling you something, they're telling you something. And, and if, it's, if it's not the answer you want to hear, I think, like, don't be afraid to ask questions. There has been times where I've, like, asked questions and clarified and been like, oh, okay, so you said that and I had misheard. Okay, great. You know? Um, but... I, I also was on the other side. Like I had, I had people not believe me when I said I wasn't ready for a relationship. Yeah. So I've, is. I've been on that end of it where I'm like, Oh my God, I, <laughs> I need you to hear me right now. And you're not, I'm not, this isn't some bullshit excuse. It's real. It works two ways. Just like we don't hear other people. Other people don't hear us. And it's so frustrating. <laughs> it's so frustrating. And, and again, there's a truth to what they're saying as well, yeah. you know? So, um, it's their truth. Yeah. And just, just be like so empathetic and kind. I feel like this whole year I've, um, I'm, I'm doing a photo project in the word this month is soften. And I feel like I've really softened up where I don't think, take things as hard. Um, yeah, I just try to be kind to myself and others. And sometimes I want to throw a temper tantrum like every human and whatever, but I, I don't make decisions from that place. I think I've been just way more laid back and like, you know, it'll work out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So what was it like when you left Lululemon? Yeah. What was, what was your last day like? Oh my God. You know, it was such a whirlwind because I wasn't actively looking for another position. I knew I was at the cusp of taking on more clients, um, kind of figuring that out, what that looked like, building a business. And I had this like you know, like the ideal vision of like where, how, how my life is um, working. And then, um, I got referred actually, Ali referred me to move and they just were like, Hey, we need someone part-time in house, but like we needed you last week. I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) you know? So it was, it was just kind of like a leap of faith. It happened so quickly. I feel like I didn't even fully like process it. Um, I feel like I'm still processing it. I'm, I just started my second week or I guess I'm going to be finishing tomorrow, my second week with move. And, um, I finally feel like I have both feet, not like I hadn't had my feet in before, but now I'm like, I feel more connected to the team. Like I'm feeling like, oh my God, I actually like work here and I don't go to Lululemon anymore. And, um, 
It was really bittersweet. Yeah, it was really hard. It was like I, I literally cried when I told them. And it was like, a, oh my God, I'm so scared. But also like I'm so sad to be leaving my people. Yeah. Like the people at Lululemon are like the best. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. So um, yeah, I felt really sad to consider, okay, I'm not going to get to talk to these people every single day about you know our lives like our, our what we're doing outside of them and I and I think of like Friday mornings were really special to me because that's when we'd merchandise and I'd start at 7 a.m <laughs> there's something special when you have to start that early <laughs> with someone and you know we had this little core crew and um, I think I was literally late every day uh, <laughs> for that and you know it was just like a camaraderie yeah you know you're working with a, a team and We'd listen to, you know, some days we'd listen to salsa music and some days we'd listen to relationship podcasts or whatever I, I felt like. And uh, yeah, it was really hard to step away from that and also scary because Lululemon also provided so many opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like you you have enough close relationships from that that'll, that'll continue to flourish. Yeah. And, and I'm actively um, maintaining some of them too. Not like I'm not actively maintaining others, but you know, naturally things happen. And yeah. um, there's there's definitely people where I make the point of, of talking to them, of reaching out to them. Um, I want to start running with Run Collective because I want to be around those people. And I'm saying I want to start because it, I, I'm just this year, I just don't want to run outside in the yeah. cold. Yeah. I'm just like over it. I did it last year. I just don't feel like doing it this year. So um, I'll be back at Run Collective and, and November Project and all those things because I think the community is so powerful. Yeah. Um, the way they rally. Yeah. I want to be part of that. There's certain things and people that we mandate in our lives. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. So important. Um, so on the topic of Lululemon, because mm -hmm. they always talk about big, hairy, audacious goals. Yeah. What's your big, hairy, audacious goal? Mm -hmm. So it's funny because it kind of led me to um, take a leap and leave is I can work from anywhere in the world. So it never really had like a dollar amount. It just it was a lifestyle and I want to be able to get on a plane when I want to get on a plane. Yeah. Or get in the car and go to the mountains whenever I want. I want to create a lifestyle that's filled with flexibility and um yeah, I think the rest, you know, there's other other things I, I have in mind, but I think that one has been like a really, really strong one that's been consistently pushing me to, you know, create a side hustle. Like I've, I've never just worked at Lululemon. Like I've always done something else as well and kind of found my way. So I think at the end of the day, that is 100% what I want to create. And um, I know it'll be eventually a business. And in my eyes, a business you created to... Um, to sell it or retire off of it you know and however that whatever that looks like i'm so open like i'm like i have this vision and whatever it takes for me to get there is what i'll do you know and i want to leave legacy as well i think legacy is so important so i think city yoga will play into that how i can impact our city how i can impact um how people experience yoga and through yoga what they they can create in their life and i think that is huge for legacy um yeah i don't think i'd want to look back on my life at you know 80 years old and and be like man i sat in the office all day and no one's gonna remember me yeah and i know like maybe that's shallow or ego to be remembered but i think that's where legacy will will be more impactful or meaningful you know what does it look like 50 years from now if i change the experience of yoga here yeah that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And it's like, it's important to have like a purpose mm -hmm. and to know that you do something that impacts other people is so fulfilling. Yeah. With City Yoga, I wrote out some like long-term goals and uh, a couple of them include providing teacher training for people that can't afford it. Whether they choose to teach or not teach, I think uh, going through the process process of learning to be a teacher is so powerful. Um, you learn so much about yourself so having, you know, how do I set up that system where by donation yoga somehow pays for someone to take training, <laughs> you know, like you start getting like creative in your brain. And, and I think that's, you know, an aspect of legacy. Like what, what would it be like to hand that over to someone and be like, basically like a scholarship? Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. really cool. I like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. 
So talking about your day to day, I want you to list off four non-negotiables that mm. every day that you wake up, you need these in your day. Mm. Okay. Um, right now, a non-negotiable is um, my structured workout plan. And it doesn't mean I work out every day, but it, it's like planned into my week. I'm very aware of what I have to do that day. If I don't have it set, I won't do it. And if I don't do it, it impacts my mood. 100%. If I go like a week without working out, my mental state drops and I make decisions from more of like a negative space. So my workout has to be set. And I'm, you know, willing to be flexible on some things, but what I've discovered, the, the more rigid I am, the better it actually works. So I'm very committed to like what my sweat of the day or you know, how my workouts are planned out for the week. It's a non-negotiable. Um, food. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of boring now when it comes to food. I joke about it. I love cooking for people. I love cooking for other people. But um, like nourishing my body is so important. And I just don't have certain things in my house now. I think uh, every time I make little, you know, like, oh, no, it'll be okay. Like I'll take, you know, do takeout or blah, blah, blah. I always regret it. And again, I think that's an impact on my um, mental well-being and my, you know, like my emotions versus, yeah, I like physically you may not feel great but it does like how you take care of your body is a huge um impact on how you how you function day to day so I, i'm pretty like boring when it comes to like what i eat i don't vary it very much but i know that works for me right now and based on like my schedule and what i want out of my life i'm so happy to be like boring with my food um like i don't really have any like booze in the house we have a uh, Prosecco in the fridge just in case for celebration. Yeah, like course. we always have a bottle. <laughs> um, yeah, it's to the point where like I was going out and I was like, oh, I'm going to grab like a glass of wine where, you know, I'm getting ready. And I like opened my cabinets. I'm like, I don't have a drop of liquor in my house. Like what? That's so weird. Um, you know, and I, I'm, I used to be like a bartender. I used to have like a full cabinet of stuff. And now it's just like actually doesn't benefit me. Having a glass of wine when I come home doesn't benefit me at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, workout, nutrition, completely non-negotiable. Um, what else is non-negotiable? Those are good questions. Shoot. <laughs> what can I not live without? I, I feel like what's happening with indie, like I'm so hyper. I know it sounds weird, but again, that's like a, the discipline aspect. If you have, it's amazing how disciplined you have to become if you have to take care of someone else. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I can't sleep in. I have to get up and walk the dog. You know, I want to go to the mountains. Guess what? I have to make a plan for a babysitter. Do so, you find that having Indy makes you take better care of yourself as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm at the park three, four days a week. I'm like walking all the time. I take breaks from my work. And that's like why I got a dog though. Because I knew like, I knew as a self-employed person, you can sit at your desk for 12 hours. And like get up and be like, what just happened? So having Indy, sometimes it annoys the crap out of me to be like, oh my God, I have to take you for a walk again. And at the same time, I'm like, thank God I have to get up, get up and go outside. Yeah. You know, like the, the, the days that I'm like, I don't have time to take you to the park for an hour are probably the days that I have to take you to the park for an hour. Um, and it gets, gets me out. Like when I go to the, you know, the, the dog park with him, I don't wear headphones. I just walk and I enjoy the walking i meet people i've like like literally made like other friends at the dog park like people you recognize and go for walks with and and get connected to the community so yeah like my how life revolves around indie it's like i'm very cognizant of it like i have to plan um yeah so that's kind of a non-negotiable and i don't know i guess i guess um kind of i mean it really ties into probably the 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 sweat um is I try to stick to a schedule. Again, it's discipline, but the the at the end of the day, if I know where I have to be, who I have to be with, and what has to get done, it leaves these open spaces in your life where you know you can just relax. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I know once I'm done this, 
I can say yes to going out with a friend. I can like, and when I say yes, I'm like, yes, I want to be there. Not, oh my God, I'm obligated. <laughs> you know, um, I need to get other work done. And sometimes it's hard to say no. And I still struggle with it. But the best weeks I have are the ones where I know exactly where I have to be with who doing what. And then the open gaps are the ones where I really enjoy. And I for sure have um, one day a week where I don't plan anything before noon. And I just let myself get up, read a book, do whatever I want, work out, don't work out, whatever. Like I, I, I do leave that, that open space, but it's because I know the rest of the week is fine. Like there's yeah. no, there's no, you know, and I used to joke, um, with a little lemon. It was like, if it's not an outlook, it's not real. That was like my rule. If it's not in my outlook, it's not going to happen. Done. I booked a meeting with a photographer next week and I was like, if it's in my calendar, I'll show up. We just yeah. need to put it in. Yeah. That's kind of the same with me. Like yeah. all my client sessions, everything that I do, it needs to be in my Google Calendar, yeah. or else it doesn't exist. I think I drive people nuts sometimes. I've had, I've had, <laughs> I have a friend where I was like, "Hey, do you want to go to the mountains?" It was like two and a half weeks in advance. Hey, do you want to go to the mountains on like January? Blah blah. And their response was, "Wow, you're really planned." And uh, in that moment, I was like, "Well, yeah, like doesn't everybody?" <laughs> but, <laughs> but in my head, like I thought about it later, and I was like, "Oh, was, he must think I'm crazy." But um, it was it was a weekend between transition between Lululemon and move, so um, that was actually like scheduled fun time. You know, like I like put it into my calendar of like whatever happens that weekend. I want it to be a weekend where I like relax. So when I start work on Monday, I feel really good. Yeah. You know, like fun is fun, but it's even more fun when you actually have nothing holding you back from like fully enjoying that moment. Totally. Yeah. Agreed. So we're going to wrap it up. We're going mm. to our last question. Kay. This is something that I ask everybody. Okay. If you could give one piece of advice to somebody on living their most authentic life to mm. the fullest, what would that piece of advice be? Hmm. Whew. Enjoy the process and keep growing. I know it's kind of like a double, but I I think the advice I would give is just keep growing. Be open to change. Yeah, be open to growth. Read books, listen to podcasts, ask friends, tell your parents the truth. Um, yeah, I think if you want to live an authentic life, then you have to behave authentically, like live into that identity. Yeah, live into the identity of who you want to be and um, yeah, be open be open to hearing things you don't want to hear yeah you have to you have to have room for growth i i think um recently i was reading somewhere about like the idea that imagine if who, <laughs> your best self like imagine if what you are now is your best self that's boring man yeah <laughs> you want to level that shit like up. you want to level it up yeah. then you are not your best self so like let's not pretend we are like let's just admit that we all have faults we're going to all be vulnerable go ask a friend for help go pick up a book leave some time for your own development yeah it'll, it'll you know i'm still doing it i'm not like some you know like i don't know the answers but that's that's what gives me space to make mistakes and grow yeah that's awesome yeah well it's been a pleasure mm -hmm. sitting down and chatting with you mm -hmm. i'm sure i'll see you around yeah <laughs>